Well, welcome to episode 58 of More Geek Than Gay. An attempt to return back to geek. Because we were so gay last week. Just gay. So, um, those of you listening... Hi, how you doing? Where's my Australians at? Those of you watching... How come no Australians? I don't get it. But that's another issue. Uh, those of you watching... I had originally focused Joseph into the picture. As you will notice, Joseph moved significantly out of the picture during the first half of this podcast. Um, what are you going to do? Hmm? I know what we're going to do. Cue music. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. first massage. Ever. Ever. I got my first massage yesterday at work. For those of you who do not know Edward that well, Edward doesn't like being touched. I, well, yeah. Are you a cuddler? Not, I mean, for a little while, but then it's like, well, okay, that's done. <laughs> because, you know, got to Do you like over. to hug people? Well, how well do I know them? <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, so it was, it was different. I got a massage. Yes. That, 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 that right there is actually kind of a story in, it, in and of itself. That, that doesn't really need much embellishment. The fact that I got the massage. There, and I have an appointment to go do, uh, apparently it's something through my work. They brought in these massage people. We got like a 10, 15 minute massage. And then, or at least I got a 10, 15 minutes massage. Uh, actually, one of my coworkers, he said that he got like almost a half hour massage. And I'm like, well, what were you doing? Probably but, because you couldn't relax enough for her to get to you. Well, no, she, he was saying that he was struggling. But me, I, I was trying, and I had her just focus on my shoulders and stuff. But, and I have an appointment to go get like x-rays and a follow-up or whatever on Friday. So, woo! I got a massage. You could drop me off at the bar when you go to the you go to that. But that's in the morning. You can't. I can't drop you off at the bar in the morning. Yeah, you can. What? Not not any of the bars here in town. Yes, there is one. Which bar? Bark House. They have their AM stuff going on now. Uh, this Friday at, at they're opening up at 8 AM. Wow. Why? I'll tell you later. Okay. So so there's that. Mm-hmm. And I, I officially announced and did like an invitation thing for my graduation walk. So there's that. When is your graduation walk? Uh, the third? Of? Uh, May? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I know it's that first weekend at, at, at like morning. Ten? You have to be there at ten. Oh, when do people show up? This is what I found out when I graduated two years ago. Okay. Um, the time that you're given is not necessarily the time that the graduation ceremony starts. Well, it's supposed to be over because there's a second graduation ceremony that same day. Uh-huh. So, 
I'm assuming it ends when it says it's going to end. What time does it end? One? Seems like it's a three hour thing. Well, double check on the times. Because those of you who are going to the graduation ceremony, make sure it, what time it starts. Because when I graduated two years ago, I told everybody, oh, it's at 10 o'clock, and they waited for an hour. And, and those of you who aren't going, I posted an address so you can send things. Because that was a question that came up. So, money so we could get, get, get caught up on bills. Yeah, and get cats fixed. And, and get a car fixed where it doesn't leak gas anymore. Yeah, and, and then... And shutter. And, and like an Android notepad thing. Because Gabby says I need one of those. I trust Gabby. So, <laughs> but I don't want to do an iPad thing because I don't do i. The only i thing I have is my iPod. Yeah. So it had to be Android. So I'm compatible across the board. So, but hey, hi. Um, what else? Uh, hey, guess what day today is? It's our kitty cat's birthdays. It's it, our heathen's birthdays. It's yes. It, well, not all of them. But six yeah, I call them the heathen. I call them well, that brood the heathen. That brood, yeah. I call the, that brood the heathen. <laughs> Sadly, there's more than one brood. But interesting story with that. It's their birthday, by the way. If it's their birthday. Five years Garfield old. is Garfield five. is hiding from me right now because he's mad at me. Why is he mad at you? What did you do? Huh? What did you do? Make him come into the bedroom when he wasn't ready. Oh. Because he likes being in here away from him. Yeah. But but sometimes he's not in the mood. Well, he's not in the mood to come in here because for their birthday I gave him catnip. Uh, I got the cat dragged up, so. But, um, yesterday, uh, before we had announced... Junior. Junior. Junior, don't knock over, don't, don't knock things over because that would be bad. Hey, Junior. Junior. Hey. There we go. Um, yesterday, you want some Kalisto... Popcorn? Um, Kalisto, the, the old lady <coughs> who um, is no longer with us, uh, Archie had her cremated and she was delivered yesterday to Archie's work. The receptionist got the box and Archie's, oh, Kalisto's here! And then she got rather mortified when she figured out that, oh, it was literally the ashes, Kalisto uh, there, yeah, her, her ashes. So then today when Archie announced on, on Facebook that it was the heathen's birthdays, um, <laughs> she, she asked, oh my god, they're not in boxes, are they? I almost lost it at work. <laughs> That was, that was so much, that was so funny. Um, so no, they're not in boxes, they're, well I mean, they might be, but it would be a big box of their own making and they'll jump back out. Because they're still alive. Cats like boxes. And that's, that's the main things I can think of. <clears throat> I mean, truly trivial things, but at least... Hey, you had something. I had something that happened other than work. Yes. Yeah, so, how about your week? Busy as always. All right, I have my hold on. Right here. I don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm eating popcorn. This is my dinner. He's eating popcorn. Now it's my turn to eat popcorn. No, I know. Hey, she's playing the banjo. Exactly. Whenever, um, oh, real. Most people know this. Whenever there's, there's popcorn around me at a bar, at the movies, any, or even here, I will eat popcorn. That popcorn is one of my downfalls. It's my Achilles heel, so to speak. So anyways, let's start off with my week. Had a very good, very busy week, as always. Um, let's see, the Dart League. We won last night. Yep. Yep, we won last night. Um, seven or eight to eight seven. seven. Yeah. It, we won eight to seven. We would have won. Um, why am I drawing a light? We would have won um, eleven to four, but our closer wasn't there. He's at Michael Gaffney, okay. who's our who's our guy to close things. He wasn't there. Yeah. His his mother passed away, so he's in Iowa for her services. Um. So, but we won, and we won against a team that's like one of the best teams in the league. So, very happy. They had a really off off line. Um. Let's see. So that's darts. 
Um, that one guy who's on that team, he works out apparently, but he needs to work out his legs. He's very top heavy. Most there's a lot of guys that are top heavy. Kind yeah. Of thing. And it's weird because he's not birdie leg top heavy like a lot of guys are. That you go, oh my god, you you really need to do something about those legs. That's really gross. Yeah. No, it's just oddly top heavy. I'm like, oh, no, you're not balanced. Um, everything's good on Ginny Koch's front. Uh, uh, Saturday, I am going with her. She has a work. She's going to be doing a presentation at the Phoenix Writers Work Club in the built at the Biltmore. On Saturday, she um, from 11:30 to well, her it's it's from 12 to 3, but I'll be with her from 11:30 to about 4. Hey, we did something Friday. We had a casino night. We went to. Oh yeah, I was going to talk about that. Yeah. Oh okay. So, do we keep on going? Yeah, because I it's forgot. Like, I actually did something trick. else. Yeah, I did something else too. Hey. <laughs> um. So I'll be with her on Saturday. And then Saturday night, I'll be with her. And I, Edward, I think, is coming up as well. There's a uh, monthly um, gathering of some of the local authors slash geeks slash um, bigwigs. Yeah, I kind of say. local genre of bigwigs. Yeah. Um, there's, you got authors, you have sci-fi, you have... Um, Cosplays, you have, you know, it's a wide variety. It's yeah. a gathering that everybody gets together every third Saturday of the month, and, and we're, I'm going. I think you are too. You haven't said yes or no for that. No. No. See, that's then you don't have anything to drink, do you? I don't have anything to drink. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna choke on popcorn. Yet here I am, pretty more in my exactly. Mouth. Um, and then to relate, and then the next week it's gonna be interesting. We, I, we. We are going to have a different location of filming next week, by the way. We are? Yes. Oh, okay. Next week... Uh, Where are we filming next week? We either, uh, you're, either you're filming by yourself, or we're having a different location. Next week, I'm going to be house-sitting. Because Jeannie and the hus, hubs, they're going to a family reunion in LA. Okay. That's next week already. Oh, okay. So, Either I'm, if you're going to film, if you want me there, we're filming at Jeannie's place. If you don't want me there, then you're filming by yourself. So we'll, we'll see if I have a week off or not. Um, to relate to the infamous May 3rd day. Here we have some issues. Two things. One, three things. One, Edward is graduating from University of Phoenix with his bachelor's. Yay. In, in communication. I'm working on my, I'm working on figuring out where I'm going to go get my master's at. Second thing, Jeannie Koch has his, uh, uh, her first ever pre-book signing before the release party at the Poison Pen. Yeah. That day. That day. Also that day, do you realize... Which is what, why she says she can't make it. Which is probably why I can't make it. You just can't make it because I didn't show up at your graduation because I was working. And I have we to work too. were destitutely poor. I have to work as well. Okay, I'm just saying. And, and what's your excuse about not being co coming to one of my first events as chairman at the gala? Wasn't I working? No, that was Saturday night. This past fall when we were working at our uh, gallery. You know, I've never mentioned where I work at. Um, <laughs> but, okay. Um, I don't know, I'm sure I had some sort of excuse. Staying home. What was it? Stayed home. No, no, no. What was the what was the thing? Joshua Tree's 25th anniversary gala. Okay, and what was it? Oh, that was that thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, wasn't it just like a whole bunch of people sitting around eating an overpriced dinner? No. We made the dinner. Oh, you guys made the dinner. That's right. It was free. It was a free dinner. Yes. My first ever event as chairman. Okay. But anyways, on um, the third thing that's happening that day, May 3rd, you realize another thing that's happening that day? That's free comic book day. Yes, it is. Guess what you're not going to? Why am I not going to it? How can you go to it? I'm going to be graduating and then I'll go over and get free comic books. Alright. I figured it, you would want to go to Bitsy Mama's for um, a celebration lunch. Where Bitsy Mama's, if, if Lulu and Chris do what they did with me, you're going to get a huge margarita and you're going to have somebody else drive you home. Okay. But no one has mentioned that option. 
and free comic book days all day long. Yeah, but not a good choice. As you know as well as I do, about 1 o'clock you don't get much of a ch choice. They're already supposed to be putting one thing away for me. <clears throat> so, because they're trying to talk me out of getting it, because they say it's absolutely horrible, and it sounds absolutely horrible. Which is why you want it. Um, well, at first it sounded so horrible that I was like, okay, uh, I'll try it, but it looks like it's horrible. And then they described something that they saw in a preview that was really horrible, and I went, oh my god, that sounds mesmerizingly horrible. Now I have to try to see it. But they're they're fairly certain that regardless of how mesmerizingly horrible it sounded, they're like, oh no, it's not, sadly. It's just really bad. Oops, I it's, think we woke up the roommate. It's DC's next big event thing. Oh my god, are they going to start another 52? Kind of. Oh god. They're doing something that it looks like it's their zero hour, which is what DC did after the crisis, and they figured out that they had some loose ends that weren't making sense. Well, here they restarted everything, so there really shouldn't be any loose ends that don't make sense, except for the fact that they didn't plan things out really well. Yeah, that was only three years ago that that happened. Yeah, not even, no, two and a half. Yeah, so they already have things that need to be straightened out and fixed, and so that's basically what it looks like this is going to be, is them fixing things. Uh, again. Uh, again. And and they said that the the universe is going to become that their DC universe is going to become darker, and I'm like, well, you already have a place where no no hope or happiness lives. Superman's an ass. Wonder Woman like walks around with a sword and just hangs out with killer gods all day long. Even the Teen Titans aren't happy. Like I don't know how you can get this any flipping darker than it already is. It already makes. Marvel Universe look like Happyville. Okay, and that used to be my thing. Marvel Universe is where you went to for suspicion and conspiracies. DC is where you went to for hope and heroism. Yeah. And they both had their place. I was perfectly fine with that being what Marvel did. But now, there's no hope and happiness except for Archie Comics now. <laughs> Unless you read uh, The Afterlife. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then there's no hope and happiness. No. Yeah, but free comic book day coming up. Yeah. Yeah, we just jumped the whole subject there because we still have not finished your week. I know. Um, let's see. Magazine. Uh, some deadlines. Deadline had already happened. Um, I didn't make any deadline. I didn't put in anything. But I have to write up two articles that are due tomorrow. Um, that's going to go on the website. And I got a job offer with the magazine. I'll have to. I have until Monday to find, figure out if I want to do it. It's going to be a full-time position. Um, it is going to be to be an associate editor at a Compete Sports Diversity magazine. So I have to figure that out if I want to do it or not because car situation is Edward and I have one car. I would be Edward works 1 to 9 p.m. You know, and while this place, while the magazine um, is near a bus line. It's not exactly close to where we live. It's about a, eh, I think that did like a 12 mile. It's 12 miles from here, and in Phoenix, that's not about, a bicycle ride. It's not a bicycle ride, <laughs> and it's a long bus ride. It's I looked at it, it's about an hour and 15 minutes on the bus. Oh. It's 20 minutes on by car, and that's all freeway. Yeah. So. Um, We'll have to see. I, that's the, that's the only thing that's stopping me from saying yes to it is because of you know figuring out transportation. They are willing to work with me with when it comes to Joshua cheering the darts, but I have to figure out a car because, like I said a little while ago, our car is falling apart. Poor thing. I love our car. It leaks gas, and when you turn a corner, it shudders. So it needs to a hose needs to be fixed, and it needs a tune-up. It needs a tune-up. And needs oil change and and that hose fixed and the hose fixed <laughs> yeah and a radio but that's a <laughs> that's another thing you know I'm so used to not having a radio I'd rather have air conditioning yeah there's a leak in the air conditioning I, so for the I know yeah that would actually take a fix as compared to just an install <laughs> true true yeah um <laughs> so that's with compete um Joshua Tree Joshua Tree da 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 let's see. Lots of stuff happening on Joshua Tree this week. First off, what Edwards mentioned, 
Friday night was Aunt Rita's Foundation, Viva Aunt Rita's Casino Night, which is one of their big um, fundraisers. Yes. It's their first year of doing a casino night, but it, traditionally it's one of the big fundraisers because they usually, they used to do a Saber Life fundraiser at the um, Art Museum, Phoenix Art Museum. This night they did um, a casino night. Edward actually came with me. Uh, uh, yeah, he actually went out on a Friday night. Look at him. After working after eight hours. After work, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was nice. I thought it was, I loved the venue. It was the, very nice. Yeah, the venue was gorgeous. And I ran into a friend I hadn't seen in years and years. Yeah, kind of scared him when he was on a date. Yeah, I did. I, I think I did. Yeah. But I'm still hoping that I can talk him into, like, helping out with Leprechaun. Yeah. Because even though he recommended an absolutely horrible movie, he I, I do like his opinion on things other than that. So. Um, but it was a good event. I liked it. Um, ran into a bunch of old, bunch of friends. I shouldn't say old friends because I these are people I know now. Um, that was that was the Viva and Rita's. Uh, and we had whoopee cakes. Yes, we had whoopee cakes. Almost as many as we could just shove in our mouths. Um, I know. We took some home. We got there a little on the later side, so the, there was even though I heard that the food there was a lot of food and it was really good. We you know there was not that much food, but because I had to work. Yeah. Oh, then I'm not complaining about that. I mean, the event was from oh, yeah. 8 p.m. I could have, I could have eaten something. Yeah, the the <laughs> event was from 8 p.m. to 10, to midnight, and we got there about quarter to ten. Yeah. So. Um, and left about what? 11:30. Yeah, and it was definitely winding down. Yeah, it, because the the woman oh, who the woman who oh. made the whoopies for pies were basically saying, "Here, take as many as you want." So you know, it was a win on that. I know. I really wish I had a container with me at that time. Yeah, I had to balance them on my program. Um, so that was that. Uh, lately, Joshua Tree is is in the works of working with Southwest Center for HIV AIDS. Um, and um, doing a couple grants, so I've been doing a lot of meetings with Southwest at the, the at the Southwest Center, and uh, they've been coming to Joshua Tree as well. So I've been doing a lot of background stuff with them. Um, hopefully, it works that we get these grant. One of them is with Mac um, Cosmetics, and the other one is with Walmart. Um, there are others down the road, but these are the two one the two that are basically due now. So we're working on that because they do a lot of stuff and we do a lot of stuff, but separately we don't match what they're asking for the grants. So, but together we do. Okay. That's why we're doing it. You know, I was thinking the other day that, and I don't know why this popped in my head, but I was thinking there should be like a an HIV positive gaming night. Oh, something to think about. Like board gaming, role playing gaming. That's a, yeah, with your schedule, what night? I don't know. It seems like it would have to be a weekend or something. Yeah. 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 So, and who knows what they would, how they would do it because it would have to be a night. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Because yeah. a lot of people have jobs during the day. And yeah. Stuff, so, yeah. So, Oops. and I don't know how they accommodate things like that. It's been a long time since they've had to deal with them directly, but they don't normally have their hours open. No, they don't. Yeah. No. So it might have to be something else, even separate from them. It might just be something like, "Hey, Samurai Comics, you want to have an H, you want to have a gaming night with a whole bunch of HIV positive dudes?" <laughs> we could also have it at Joshua Tree. Could we do have the client room? Oh, okay. Could do that on the weekend. I have keys. I have the code for the alarm. Yeah, we could do it anytime. They we don't. Want. Well, I mean, they wouldn't want it. Okay, I'm in I charge of the group. Okay. As what I was but you told. But you went to, to the church. Yeah, well, yeah, but we... We play that satanic D&D. &D. <laughs> We're not playing D&D &D there. We can play D&D &D there. We're not playing D&D &D there. Why wouldn't we? See? Because D&D is boring. It is not boring. You have not... I tried D&D. &D. I was bored out of my mind. That's because you didn't play a Modron. No. This is before modems. No, not modems. Modrons. I love Modrons. So anyways, and beholders, but you can't play a beholder, they're crazy. Um, today, which is the third Wednesday of the month, that, then that's when we're recording right now. Um, every third Wednesday of the month we do a lunch. 
And today was our Easter meal lunch. Easter meal? Yes. It was a traditional what, Easter. What? It was a it, traditional Easter meal. So we had ham, we had mashed potatoes, we had green beans. We with green beans with bacon, by the way. You had um, oh gosh, whether you had pumpkin pie and pecan pie and apple pie. There was food. There was lots and lots and lots of food. We had about 160 people show up. Cool. There was actually 161. Did we get Where leftovers? This? I ate them all. Oh. There wasn't much. I never get leftovers. There wasn't much. I mean, yeah, it was true. the food was good. Miss uh, Miss Millie was in charge of that, and she did a really good job. I was very happy because guess what else was back that I I really like about I liked about old Joshua Tree, and I like when we do these lunches that the salad back. bar. The salad bar was back. <laughs> The salad bar. Hey, I like the salad bar. The salad bar is cool. Okay, I'm sorry. I always like the salad bar. We were known for our salad bar. Because our salad bar, you have up to 30 items on a salad bar. You know, okay. that you can pick from. So, anyway, so I had the salad bar and then stuff like this. And it was very busy. A very long day. I had to be there at 8. And so I show up at quarter to 9. Um, and I didn't get home until 4.30. And long day. That's long why day. I'm in my pajamas. So I'm wearing my Superman pajamas just because those were the ones on top of the pile, not because of this. <laughs> um, let's see what else. That's it for Joshua Tree. It's I can not think like you of. have to excuse Superman pajamas. Well, these were a Christmas gift. Well, yeah. Superman, were, Superman's Christmas, cool, even Christmas though he's an ass right now in the comic books. But. One world. Oh, well, in the current, in yeah. which they keep on swearing they're never going to go back. This is what we're stuck with. And I'm like, ah. Even though their sales, oh, 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 they have recently started becoming, I mean, they've always been the big two, and for a while they were number one after the 52. It, it you mean DC? DC and Marvel. Yeah, they were the weren't saying names. Okay, yeah, sorry. DC, Marvel, big two. And for a while they were had moments of taking number one and everything. Well, their sales are starting to indicate that, hmm. They might have slipped to number three for uh, a couple. Of, yeah, yeah. No one is like it. this Woo! new. Who booked out? Uh, I believe Image, which publishes Walking Dead. They put out Invincible. They put out a lot of. They put out a lot of good stuff, which is amazing, given what they started with. But and I was positive that this was a company that was never going to succeed. But fortunately, the the current president of it. Um, Oh, I cannot think of any of it. He's done just great stuff. Um, so, but yeah, DC, their their new universe is not working. Not not working the way it was. Let's put it that way. It's not necessarily like they're mis losing money, but they're not making the share that they made yeah, they, they used to. prior to becoming the new um, 52 that they were able to consistently hold. And that's how come they're doing like these weird stunt crossover things every six months. To get, they're going to get straight credit. from one into the next. It's it's ridiculous. But, sorry, um, I don't even remember what brought that up. I have no idea. Oh yeah, your pajamas. Oh. Superman pajamas. So what else happened with your week? That's it. That's your week? Yeah, that's my week. Oh, okay. So what would you like to talk about first? I'm drinking something. Okay, that's a good point. You are you are drinking something. <laughs> I had to translate that for those who were not visually you, you, watching. I swear this. sometimes you should be a waiter because you always do that. I have a mouthful of food and you want me to talk about something. I have something. I'm drinking something and you want me to talk about something. That's about you are. I'm sorry. No, you're not. You do that all the time. And you're not sorry. All right, let's start about gay shows because we already had a, we already talked about comics, so that's because I haven't read any comics. So let's see. Let's start off with the face. Do you remember what happened on the face first? This before is I... the face. Now he doesn't remember anything. Let me tell you what I wrote down because because you wrote been, notes. I wrote notes because I was watching him scribbling notes feverishly while we were watching these shows because. We've gotten very like something happened. We don't know what happened. We don't know this. We don't know that. So I figured, all right, let's see the face. 
models, the models, which are six models now. Yes. No, seven. Seven? Seven. Well, six now. Six now, after the episode. Yeah. They dressed up as males. Oh, that's right. RuPaul was on there. And RuPaul was a guest mentor. A guest mentor. And the models dressed Helping up as males. Helping them touch with their inner in male. male. I know. Uh, but the models um, dressed up as males, and they had a photo shoot with their mentor models. So the two female models who are now male models had to do a photo shoot with Naomi Campbell. And Naomi was saying that she was going to, like, unbutton their pants and stuff. Yeah, she got creepy. That was, yeah, it was creepy uncle really fast. Yeah. 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 We won't describe anything more than that because we have young hips with it. Fortunately, fortunately, that's not where it went. Even the photographer was like going, yeah, I think you're kind of going, and she didn't even get there. And the photographer was kind of putting an X name on her. Yeah. So, yay, thank you, photographer. And uh, you know the biggest thing I got out of this episode? What? This episode with Rue being the mentor for them being men and all that, I am now convinced more than ever that RuPaul's Drag Race needs to do, you know how they do the little mini seasons of the All-Stars and then... Uh, I thought they had another one somewhere, but I can't think of what it was. They need to do a, at least a mini season of um, RuPaul's Drag Race, Drag Kings. Yeah, you've been saying that for a while. She's she's proven that she understands kind of the idea of the whole gender bending thing, not just drag queens. Yeah. And get together like a little mini season of just six. Test the waters. See how it works. Do it, Rue. So Naomi's team one. Naomi's team one. And Kadisha was kicked off. Now Kadisha, if you've been watching, what? Well, I was gonna say probably what you're gonna say. Um, we talked about <coughs> Kadisha is the one that a couple weeks ago, um, one of the other models had stated that you know nobody from America and no woman of ethnic color. No woman that's not from her. Nobody not from her. Yes. Yeah. Is going to win this thing. Yeah. And that's when Naomi threw a Naomi Campbell yeah. fit. And she didn't throw a phone. She just threw a fit. Thank God. Yeah, and called everybody on it and defended Kadisha. Now Kadisha was not on Naomi's team and still could, uh, um, defended her as well as the fact that had Naomi always regarded Kadisha very highly. She, Naomi wanted Kadisha on her team originally. Yes. So, but Kadisha wasn't doing as well anymore the last, you know, she's been last couple, it. yeah. It's funny, during the practice, Kadisha was doing better than what she did in front of the camera. Yeah, as soon as the camera would go up, she would completely freeze and... Yeah, she was fantastic during the practice, giving tips to the other girls that was exactly correct about faking out to the, you know, the three-quarter and all that. But so now all the um, teams are down to two people. So we'll have to see what happens because you know it's being taped tonight. Oh, it's being taped tonight. Yeah, oh. it comes on on Sunday, on Wednesdays. Oh well, there you go. All right, and let's go on with next one. Under the Gun season finale. We'll see if it comes back. Oh, oh please don't let it come. And back. if it comes back, let's hopefully that they fix it. Okay. Yeah. Get, I, I, I'm not against Tim Gunn having something come back, but not not what we just saw this season. All right. It ended with the um, instead of having the top three designers, it was a top four. They didn't kick anyone off this, the episode prior. Right. Like that hasn't happened before in a reality show. He learned from Heidi. <laughs> it's like they all do that. It seems. Um, so four top designers and all three mentors are there. Um, for the season finale. They had to do, unlike Project Runway, where you had either top three or top four, they were, they were given um, six weeks to do a 12-piece collection. These people had three days to do five pieces. Was it five or six? Five. Okay, I thought it was six. No, five. Okay. So, let's start off with, let's see if you remember these shows. Sam's show. Sam. 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 Okay. Was Sam the girl? No. Sam was the guy. Oh, Sam was the guy. He shouldn't have been there. The, two of them shouldn't have been there, but you know. Oh yeah. Sam. Yes. 
he, he's the one about um, he was, you know, being picked on. He was bullied when he was a little kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, he did. His idea was armor. Yes, he's yes. The looks weren't bad. They just weren't something I would have put down. Did that make sense? Yeah. It, it wouldn't have been a collection, in my opinion. It's something that you send to Kmart. And he is known as a ready-to-wear designer. Right. There's nothing wrong with ready-to-wear. I mean, that's Ms. Rahi. That's really where he made his mark. But and it doesn't mean that you don't know fashion if you do ready-to-wear. It's just that don't expect couture. Yeah, and this looked like someone trying to put together a collection who really does ready to wear. So, and it was it, it really needed more color. Yeah, it was basically grays, which led to a yellow dress, and yeah. it did progress too. It, there yeah, was it, progression. Yeah, there, the first outfit was gray. The second outfit had a hint of a yellow, and then there was a then the third was a stripe of yellow. And then the fourth, there was like, like a, 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 a yellow a wedge or yeah. something. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, there was a yellow dress. Yeah. The other thing is that nothing that he put out there looked like something that I'd never seen before, other than texture wise. Mm -hmm. the, the, he did an interesting thing making it look like armor, but the, but the actual shapes and the silhouettes of the pieces and. The, yeah, basically the shapes and silhouettes of the pieces looked basically like anything else you've ever seen before. Yeah. And especially that yellow dress that just looked like a, a nice yellow summer dress. But I thought Sam Show nice. was boring. It, it was. I thought it was boring. That, that's all I wrote was Sam Show. Boring. The yellow dress was really nice except for the fact that it was just a, a yellow summer dress. Um, the next one, Shan Show. Shan. Okay. Shan. Shan. We liked Shan. We liked Shan. The judges didn't like Shan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we love Shan's lacy, leathery stuff. Yeah, he, he did the... His his um, show was the hard and soft. And so he had lots of lace and lots of leather. Yeah, I really liked those pants. What they were was... The they, pants I liked the pants. with me. The, the, the pants I was off and on with. He was like... Yeah, it was leather. Uh, it was a leather strap, and then lace, and then a leather, leather strap, and, and lace, and leather. It was, it was that design, as well as his jacket. The, his oh. leather jacket was like a normal leather jacket in front, but when you run in the back, you saw it from the back. The back panel was a complete lace. And then there was the red, the red um, dress. dress or whatever underneath it. So it, it really was. It, 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 it just stood out. Yeah. Um, so. But what do we know? Well, I was going to talk about that after it was done. Yeah. And then. Um, Next one was um, Yes Junior. Okay. <laughs> oh, that took so much energy out of her. I know. Next one is um, I Aisha Isha Aisha. Something like that. Yeah, I can I. The chip. Aisha, who knows? Um, the only female on the thing. There were that left. Yeah, that made it yeah, to the end. That made it to the end. Yeah. Um, hers was. Um, What'd she describe it? Like a Cleopatra? Oh, yeah. What was it? Like Cleopatra in the future? Or something yeah, like Cleopatra that? in the future kind of a thing. Or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. To me, and I wrote this, costume me. It yeah. was very costume me for me. It, it, yeah, and it just. All the pieces were okay. I can't even really remember what any of them looked like. All I know That's is that it, 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 she had she she had this print that was it was very shiny and it was vertical and it was like green and gold and um, and, and you know and, and she used it in everywhere that that was her coise her her yeah. um, item that just went through all five pieces but she would like a skirt made out of that that looked like it was from a Hollywood movie. And then she made like a, a, a blouse out of it that looked like it came from a Hollywood movie. It looked very costume to me. Okay. You know. Yeah. Um, so, um, and then there was Oscar's show. It was actually a gorgeous collection. Oscar's show was a best but, of. But it was. I, I agree. It was a best of. It, it was basically, hey, we've seen these before in your other 
um, cha challenges, challenges throughout the season. If you did not know that, if you just walked into it, like Heidi and because Heidi Klum and um, Neil Patrick Harris, Neil Patrick were, they, Harris the guest were guest judges, who apparently were actually judges too. They 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 seem to actually have real input. They just walked into it, not having seen the rest of it. I could see someone like going, "This is a gorgeous collection," because it was a gorgeous collection. Those of us who had been watching all along go, "Hey, we've seen this." Yeah, and the and the other judges who've been there the whole season called them out on that too. Yeah. So, but it was a good show. It just nothing was new. Yeah, that was the whole thing. He did five pieces. Well, he just made those five pieces. There were no new ideas. Right. So, um, who won? Well, let's just go about this. Oh, because I have this other thing. Is like Edward and I picked out that um, it should be uh, Shan and um, Oscar should be the top two. Uh, the roommate who dare not speak his name also, also agreed. Also with us. agreed. Yeah, we all three were right there with that. Yeah, and thinking that, that Shan two, should win. Yeah, the other two we didn't even think were a possibility. Yeah, Sam and I, I, Aisha, or Aisha, or whatever her name is, they were gone. Yeah. It's like, oh, nice to know you. Exactly. What happened was Sam was gone. He was not there. He, they, he got let, let go. He, he's not the winner. Shan was let go. And Shan was like the one that, while they were discussing it, was the only one that was clearly not the winner. When they were discussing it, Sam was actually one of the three names that they still kept on bartering back and forth of like, well, I want to see what more he has. I like this collection. Da 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 da. Shan, he was just out. Yeah. Our favorite collection, gone. So is Aisha, Aisha, whatever her name is, and Oscar. Yes. Now, Oscar won. Well, we did like his thing. It was we a beautiful did, collection. It was a beautiful. It was a good. It was a good show. Um, Oscar won, and then, and no sooner, and after that we saw the show, I basically looked at the boys and said, "We are not fashionistas," because we called that wrong. We completely so, were wrong. Well, on we that. did say that he would be one of the two finalists, but that's about as far as we we didn't say he was going to win. No, no, we thought it was going to go to Shan. Yeah. So we're not fashionistas, and those of you who knows us, we don't. We're not. I mean, look at us. As I was told recently, as you can tell on the audio podcast, look at us. As I was told last uh, recently, um, I'm not. I am not an A gay, A lister gay because I don't dress to the nines every time I go out the door. I at least take a shower and brush my teeth before I go out the door. But you know, I'm not an A lister where I have to look. You know up to the nines. Alright, last gay show. RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race, start your engines. Ready for the big shocker? I really lost the tune there. Yes, you did. What's the big shocker? Well, that, well let's, let's not do the big shocker yet. Oh. Let's discuss the episode first. This episode is they had to be do stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy? This was the stand-up comedy? This was the stand-up comedy one. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, this I'm wasn't the that's just, yeah, that was last week. No, that was last week. week. This one yeah. was oh, the talk show with um, yeah. Chaz Bono. You don't have that down in your no, notes. no, no, because I did the shocker. I did the ending. Oh, okay. I did. It was with Chaz Bono and I can't think of her name right now. Uh, uh, Cher's mom. mom. <laughs> Who is uh, a country singer? Is, I thought she was jazz, but she's country. Yeah. And she talks just like Cher, just a little older. But then again, Cher talks just like Cher, just a little older. So <laughs> there, were, there were talk shows, and they had, you know, and each one of them did it. Um, your thoughts on them? Uh, really, none of them did a good job. No, none of them no. hit it out of the park. None of no. them was, yeah. Um, Bianca was shocking that she didn't. She was actually doing well with what she did, but she had this idea that she was going to ask Chaz all the questions first, and then follow up with questions with Cher's mom. But she ran out of time, so she just asked Chaz questions, and then time, and she's like going, oh crap. She even knew once the time was done. Did something just... 
Well, oh. it, it's it's Princess making noises outside. Oh, hi, Princess Retard. Oh, okay. But um, oh well, there was one person who actually did do a really good job. Uh, not an exceptional job, but did a good job, and that would be caught in the act. Yeah. She's the only one who did a competent job. She's the only one who did a competent job, yes. She, and like I said, not exceptional. She did a good job. She's the only one who was competent. Yeah. The rest of them really dropped the ball here, there, and everywhere. Exactly. Uh, to including the one queen, um, Trinity, who was saying, instead of Chaz Bono, was saying Chad Bono. So, yeah, as... as and she got called out for it. It's like if you're gonna have a guest, make sure you know what their who their, what their name is and yeah. how to say it. And then um, J J J J J J Jordan A Jordan. The one who asked about um, Cher's mom having an abortion or not. Oh, Jocelyn Fox. Jocelyn. Hey, I remembered it began with a J. It sounded like you were saying G. I thought you were going to say Gia. G, 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 G. I couldn't think I thought of you were going to say Gia. Oh, yeah, I was going with a J. I just couldn't think of what her name was. Yeah, that, but, was, that was the worst one. And her interview actually was going well. Her interview possibly was the best one. Until, until she, until she, she took said, what is your views on pro-life? And... Oh, and you almost had an abortion, and and that that would have meant that Cher wouldn't be here. What do you think? Of, yeah, it's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that 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 was not the right way to segue into that. Okay. Because I'm not saying you can't ask hard questions. I'm saying you don't ask them the way she did it. You she you prepare just, them. You she, you say you prepare you you do a little, and now we're going to talk about. Yeah. You don't just say, and what now? Yeah, yeah. You and what it. about? Now, just to... I just want to take a moment and have a little serious moment here, because in your memoirs you do mention... Da, da, da. There you go. There's your segue to let them know, oh, we're changing gears a little bit. <laughs> That's a little free advice for you there, Jocelyn. <laughs> like she watches this. Like she doesn't pay attention to anything. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're going to talk about the runway. It was the runway they had to talk up they had to dress up in animal chic. Animal chic. Yeah. She well, I don't know how to describe it. It was basically it was a regular outfit that she put feathers on top of her head. Yeah. And she was saying claiming that this well the leather over here was from a lion and then the, the the rooster I killed is the feathers and they're like She was some sort of like jungle princess or something. Yeah. Or I don't know. Bianca, great look, jaguar or something yeah, like that? Yeah, she was, she she was, was a leopard. Or, or, she was, was a leopard? leopard? Yes. Okay, I couldn't tell if she was a cheetah or what. She was a leopard. She had spots. And, of course, there was the moment that you know all the girls had to be going, oh shit, backstage the moment that they saw it coming up. Caught in the act. Came out as a swan. With wings. I don't think that was a swan. I would thought that was more of like an eagle. See, I got more because of a white those, swan. Because those, sw those wings were huge, and she was silver, not white. I still got I still got more of a swan. Yeah. I, I was thinking more of a swan. I'd say I got eagle. And, um, kind of like, because I thought it was supposed to be kind of a ballerina look. And then the wings opened up. Yeah. And the best, I thought that, I didn't think that was the, the best one, though. The best one I thought was Ben de la Creme when she came out as the best a one. lie. Yeah, but that's not the one that, if you were backstage, oh, you wouldn't know exactly what was yeah. going on. You, but, what, you knew, oh, but, and then the Trinity knew what Courtney was doing, you would be thinking, oh shit. Yeah, but Twi Trinity too. Trinity's. Trinity's um, animal. I can't think of what it was, but she had the, the, the feathers and it was all black with the white and the red. And oh, that was not bad. Yeah, and then, that was kind of like a spider, I and guess. And then there was Darien Lake, the world's bitterest elephant. <laughs> or however it was that Bianca put it. That was lovely. But, so. but oh, the, the wings, by the way. The wings came, she came out with the wings folded on her back. You could barely tell them. And then she hit the end of the runway. This is back to Courtney. Hit the end of the runway, struck a pose, whap, the wings came out. Yeah, 
that was an oh shit moment as far as I was concerned if you were the other queen. So here's but my... But the fly, oh my god, that... Ben really, really did a great job with that fly. And walking out on all fours like a little fly and doing the little cleaning of her legs. Here's my question though. What's your question? And this is what I was thinking of while we were watching this. These queens, now I'm pretty sure, Nick has to know what these challenge, what these themes are for the runway show because there <laughs> is no you just way. Scrabble together those wings. Yeah, there's the no way these people would be able to know. Okay, they must be told by the producers when you're uh, you're you're going to be on RuPaul's Drag Race in week blah 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 or not even week, but these are the, going to be the themes. There's going to have country. There's going to be realness. Good. There's going to be animal. There's going to be the the. There's no other way. I have not heard exactly what the thing is, but the prevailing thinking is that if you go on the show, they are going to tell you if they have something very specialty like they're going to tell you you might you're going to want to pack something to be prepared for this type of episode, this type of this type of runway, this type of they're going to ask you to bring things that you may never see. They'll probably ask you to bring a couple things to, you know, hey, we're going to do space clowns. And they'll, you'll be prepared for the space clown episode. Well, they're never going to do a space clown episode. So you're not going to have really an idea what you brought, whether it's going to apply to the challenges or not. But at least you're going to have an idea, oh, I brought something to be prepared and they're not going to hit you out of That's the prevailing thought that I've heard. We shall see. I, I disagree with that. I think they're told that you're... You, not you necessarily they're told specific? They're, I think they're told specific. Because, I'm sorry, if I was going to be... In, say, for instance, I was in that show and somebody told me to bring... That they were... To bring such and such, such and such. You know how much junk, junk you're going to have to bring? Well, and you've seen a lot of them do pack a lot, and then that's like steamer those... trunks. That's like Titanic steamer trunks. That's not, you know, carry-on bags. Well, and at the same time, they are told that they have to limit it down to that. So you're gonna have to figure out which outfits can do double duty to, to okay, this oh, no, can cover this disco if, and if do it. If you have double duty, look at what happened to um, what's her name, uh, on, um, that she wore the same outfit twice, and the second time she put like dirt on it because it was country. You know who I'm talking yeah, about? Uh, I am from Chicago. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and to be totally honest, well, I can, well, the wings kind of defend your, your attitude or your, or even the, yeah, even the, but, even the, um, the fly. The fly. Yeah. How, there's how it, there's, that, that but can't be who would just us. have that? Who would even just have that? But, but the wings, if you'd had that in your repertoire, if you had designed that outfit, I'm sorry. If, if you were gonna be going if you're gonna be going on that show and you were given a whole bunch of things, and even if they didn't say, hey, there may be an animal week, I'd be like, well, you're packing these goddamn wings right now because that's gonna scare you're gonna find something to walk to the end of the runway and wear these wings with, because gosh darn it. Those are gonna make the rest of the queens crap their pants. You are going to wear. You're going to bring that one way or the other. Now the fly. I don't even know who would have that in the repertoire to begin with. <laughs> so, but those wings, if you came up with it, you're bringing them. You're so, gonna bring it your A game outfits. So who do you think would be um, the bottom? Um, who, who would you Who would you think would be the bottom? Two. Who would I? The bottom two. I mean, okay. Uh, I was thinking it was going to be a door. Uh, as much as I really enjoy a door, I really thought it was going to be a door and Jocelyn. Yes. And I Jocelyn agree. missed the mark with the runway. And while her interview was going well, she, she did the whole abortion thing. Sunk her interview. And I and I agree. I thought it would be Jocelyn and Adore, but it wasn't. And here's the shocker: it was Adore and Trinity. I believe that the only thing that saved Jocelyn is that when they were discussing it about the idea of asking a question that can offend your guest, 
that Cher's mom stated that she wasn't offended by the question, she just was taken by surprise by it. And I think that's the only thing that saved her and made them go, okay, then I guess you get a pass on this interview. Because up until then, the interview was good. But there's no way to, I don't know how you excuse the runway. Yeah. And Trinity did do a bad interview. Trinity did a horrible interview. Trinity did a horrible interview. Adore did a horrible interview. Adore did a horrible interview. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the poor That girl ain't smart. That girl ain't smart at all. She's got a whole different set of smarts. I'm not saying that she's dumb. I'm just saying she doesn't have smarts the same way that... Normal people have. Yeah, she's got a whole... She's got a good sassy set of smarts. Because like, she's great for a soundbite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so she's uh, quick in a certain way. Adora and Trinity were in the bottom. They had to lip sync for their life. And I was positive that this was going to ruin. Because <laughs> I've been saying that I think Adora could possibly make final three. The moment that they announced that she was going up against Trinity instead of Jocelyn, I'm like, going, oh shit, there goes Adora. Adora's going home because Trinity can turn this puppy out. And surprisingly, Adora worked it. She was Great. She was. She I was I, unbelievably. I was surprised. I didn't expect her to be as really good. good. They, they were both very they good. Could have gone either way. But I, I was very door. surprised with the door. I would have gone the door. I didn't expect I, the door to be like that though. What was it that? Because I think you were also thinking a door over Trinity. It's because she actually. First off, she she knew the words. I mean, you know, that's my always biggest yeah. thing. Is the fact that she and she also worked the stage. She was all over that stage working a back and forth and she was in the was in the moment was in the music my, yeah and I think that kind of relates to my what it was that really gave the edge for a door with me was that yeah she did the dance moves yeah she worked the stage she I mean it's not like Trinity stood still no and Trinity like worked Trinity, the, Trinity, Trinity knew also, the moves Trinity a door made these faces it was the the fact that she was willing to make faces that wasn't just pretty girl I'm lip syncing faces she made she was almost I really wanted to watch her just to see what she would do a kind of like um, oh I cannot think of the name of the artist now Nina Hagen Nina Hagen will make these faces and on any in any other situation they'd be goofy faces but they're just hypnotic and just different and that's when suddenly that's what won me over for Adora I'm like wait Adora has a chance here not just for that but Adora has a chance of winning because of the faces and I think that's part of what you were saying being in the moment yeah because there's been plenty of times I've stated this is like there are some songs that I do that I'm just so into it that I have no idea what I'm doing and I have no idea what I did People will tell me, oh, I can't believe you did this and this and this and this. It would look like that and that and that. And I'm like, I have no idea. I remember walking on stage and I remember leaving. That's about as much as I remember. Because you just get so focused and you just get so involved and so into the song. It's just a second nature to you. Yeah. So, I, I Adora won and Trinity got kicked out. Yes. So, now let's talk and about it's the... sad because we did... Uh, Trinity, like Trinity should have gone on was... Father. Trinity should have gone on Father. Jocelyn Fox should have been at the bottom and, and, gone, home. and gone home. And if... If Rue does her thing of bringing back contestant like she's done in the past, I believe it would be Trinity. Trinity. Uh, before this, I thought that maybe it would be Milk. If Jocelyn had gone home, I would have thought that maybe Milk was going to come back. But now, if Rue brings back anyone, it, it has to be Trinity. Okay, so let's talk about the controversy about RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race controversy, which I've gotten into big discussions about as well. Very polite discussions, but big discussions. And I, uh, you go because I. Well, first tell her, tell her what's the the controversy. Well, For those who do not watch RuPaul or do not know about this huge controversial thing. Okay. There was a episode. What really sparked the controversy was that a couple episodes ago, the there's many challenges most of the time that lead to that again lead to the big challenges. There was a mini challenge where they had. To, they had um, close-ups of women or whatever, and you had to choose female or she-male. The trans community 
Not all of them. Not all of them, but some members of the trans community took offense to this. She-male is a derisive term as far as they're concerned. Um, as are, there's quite a few others that we can toss in there. And this started an uproar because also every episode, you've got she-male comes on and suddenly that was an issue. There may have been mumblings before, but now suddenly RuPaul is insensitive towards trans community. Which I think that, especially given the fact that Chaz Bono was going to be on the show and she's always said you've got shemale, I don't think all of the trans community was being offended by what RuPaul does. Go for it. It's bullshit. You got shemale is like saying is a der is a derivative of you got mail from AOL. It's yep. not. It's S H E dash M A I L, not M A L E. So that should not have been taken off because this episode they instead of ha having you got shemale they showed just the RuPaul like no they showed the RuPaul's logo. Oh okay. The RuPaul's Drag Race logo. It's BS. Carmen Carrera, I'm calling you out on this. You were on the show, and now you have problems with it? And I wish I could remember the name of the other one that kind of joined her on that, too. This. My. It's just, it's, it's... I've never been a PC person in the first place, but this is just one of those, it's gone too far. My thoughts on it are twofold, and I'm going to try to make them short, because, Good luck. yeah. It, it's really hard for me to be short on this one because it's I, really hard for you to be short on anything. I am very passionate about this subject, though, in related subjects. Um, one, I have said in the past that RuPaul gets a pass. She's a, she's a drag queen. Drag queens get a pass. That's because a good drag queen is also an entertainer slash comedian. Otherwise, you're just a female impersonator. Okay, a drag queen is part comedian. Comedians and satirists are there to say the things that you're not all supposed to, supposed to say so that we face those things. If they didn't do it, we wouldn't be facing these things. For good or bad, okay? That's why we have Don Rickles and Lisa Lampanelli and Howard Stern. And Joan Rivers. And Joan Rivers. They say these things and it, it honestly helps society because when they can say it, then we can talk about it. And, so, therefore, drag queens get a pass. I'm sorry. Second, also, if you make the word forbidden, you make the word stronger. I understand that these words carry memories of pain and all that. They were not used delicately by everybody. And therefore, when you hear them, they hurt. If you're asking to do a revolution, which is what you're really asking, you're asking for a revolution in people's views and opinions about sexuality and gender, you have to be willing to be hurt to have a revolution. Even if you're trying to do a peaceful revolution, you have to be willing to have those sticks and stones thrown your way. That's just, Gandhi did it, so get over it. And you have to take those weapons that were thrown against you and make them not weapons. And the only way to do that is not by forbidding them, which makes them stronger and makes them even more powerful, because now they know what hurts you. You have to take them back. You have to make them not weapons, which is part of what RuPaul was doing by tossing them out there. That's, that's the incredibly short version of my uh, uh, two points of my viewpoint on this. I believe this with the N-word as well. I believe this with nerd slash geek, which were terms of derision. I believe this with many terms of derision, that forbidding them is not the way to go. You have to instead make people not want to use them for hurting. So on that note... On that note... That's I all believe, I got. 
I'm really happy the fact that I got that out that quickly. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at the look, time, and I'm also looking to see if we run out of minutes. But I mean, especially given how passionate I can, I, I am on that because yeah. it's it's related to language also. Um, RuPaul has a podcast now. Oh, really? Her and Michelle do a podcast. Um, what's the tea? It's very entertaining. They were talking about the auditions for season seven. They mentioned how um, they see a lot of queens doing the exact same thing. And that is they see queens doing what they think will get them on RuPaul. That what they think Ru wants to see. And what really stands out is the queens that just do themselves. Yeah. So, and it was actually so... <laughs> It was so such an interesting and inspiring talk almost that I'm like going, screw this, I gotta put on a wig and some lipstick and I will audition for season seven because I'm strong and it was weird. If you listened to it, you'd probably be thinking the same thing. It was such yeah, but a you're weird. not a Grizzly Adam Dread Queen. I'm That's not, why I'll never go for this. I'm not a Grizzly I'm not, Adam I would Drag Queen. Be, although I can I can staple in super glue with the best of them. Uh, they, but you uh, don't know how to do a wig. I don't know how to do a wig. The wigs would be what would kill me. It would be turbans. I, <laughs> every day is a different turban. <laughs> but they also talked about um, her early days um, doing drag. And they discussed uh, Michelle's nails. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's really big in the nails. It, it was actually a very entertaining podcast, about an hour long, just a little bit over. So it falls right into Seder's um, for little slot yeah. there. Yeah. Unlike us. Yeah, yeah. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, okay, we're back. It's the next day. Howdy. We, we slept. Battery died, so I, felt, I just rolled over and fell asleep. I was wearing my pajamas anyways. You were. It made it very convenient that way. Yeah. Now we're all... I just got back from work and Edward's going to work. Ta-da! Meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out how to get comfortable right here. And I'm eating my breakfast, so excuse me while I have donuts. Powdered donuts. Yes. Oh, Garfield's not here. No, Garfield. Garfield was here, but now he's gone. Oh. Um, well, um, we do have another TV show that we... Um, that on Sci-Fi Channel... They started a new series, um, Metal Hurlant, which I oh, always sure. was told was Metal Hurlant, because it's based on the French magazine, Metal Hurlant, which is how it's told it's pronounced, which in America is Heavy Metal Magazine. It's a Belgian-France production with English actors, though. It's an English production that's out of Belgium-France co-op thing. I think Channel 4 or something like that in there. Each episode's a half hour. It's an anthology series. Uh, the first season's just six episodes. The second season's already been commissioned, and on Sci-Fi Channel, it's going to air right at the end of the first six episodes. So we'll actually get 12 episodes in a row. They're airing it two episodes per night, because each one's just a half hour. So you get a, a whole hour block of it. It's a little different. It's the filming's dark. I will say that that was one thing that kind of got me in the first two episodes. Is the filming is kind of dark, and it does have kind of the heavy metal style of story. If you're familiar with the magazine, the first episode, which you didn't see, I didn't see. I only saw the second. Yeah, um, involved kind of a feudal type community, but uh, on a planet. Although they had technology and robots running around, and the king was dying, and everybody was in combat, well, most of the men, actually, were in combat to prove that they were fit to be the new king. And there was a couple of them that wanted to be revolutionary and provide for the masses if they won, and that was their drive to become the new king. The, I find the fight scenes to be a little questionable, but the story was good. Five minutes before the the ending came, I knew exactly what was going to happen. No fault of their own, really. It's That's just, the way he, how he is. 
Yeah, no, not really any fault of it. It was still a good ending. I just realized, oh, I know what's going to happen here. So, it was a good episode. Um, who did it have? Master Meyer, Master Morser? Was he in the first one? I thought he was in the second one. No, it was the first one. Oh, okay. No wonder I didn't recognize him because he wasn't in the one that I saw. Well, you saw, the, you saw the tail end. Oh, no, 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 it was the second one. It was the second one. That's what I was going to say. James Monsters was in the James second Mac one. James Monsters in the second one. The second one involved a group of five soldiers and a child wh who was carrying around like a little bunny. And the planet had been overrun by these invaders that would infect you. And when they infected you with whatever it was they had, they could see through you. So if you were infected by their thing, suddenly you were a spy for them, although you were going to die real soon too. So, um, and these were the, like the last five survivors and they were trying to get to the place where the, the protector would be born or whatever. I, I don't know how to describe. They're going to, uh, to Without giving it away, I don't know. How Basically, to... they were going to a temple, and uh, they were carrying the survivor of the race, and that the, they had to go to the, the the survivor of the race had to go to the temple in order to wipe out these creatures. Yeah, yeah. Um, another actually good episode. Uh, I think there was like a fight scene in that one that I just sat there and went, really? So I don't know what's up with their fight choreographer. He's Belgium. He's Belgium. There, so, so is Jean-Claude Van Damme, and he does better fight choreography than this. Is no he one a choreographer? Jumped, no one jumped on, a, on some stairs and did the splits. Or on, on some chairs and did the splits while, like, trying to look tough. Which I always thought was really weird in those Jean-Claude Van Damme movies. I don't know how that's supposed to look tough, but... So... What night is that on? I don't know. Was it Monday? I have no idea. Well, you're the one that set it up for you. Yeah. Because we at watching. the time I wasn't going to care about it, so I didn't, you know, pay attention to it. Because it was the next night after whatever we were watching. So I don't know if it was after. I I don't know. I don't remember. Sci-Fi Channel. Look it up. Yeah, Sci-Fi Channel. Metal Hurlet. Look it up. It's it's okay so far. Uh, I, I I give it a, a a provisional thumbs up. Also. Um, finished the first season of White Space. That is a serial novel by Sean Platt and David... David... Oh, he's always so angry on the podcast, too. I can't remember his last name to save my life. But, yeah, the, the first season involves the first four books, and it basically launches from the point of a small town, a teacher goes into school and then shoots up his classroom, killing many of the students. And it deals with survivors and the aftermath and things that are starting to kind of come to the surface after this. It's actually a science fiction thriller. Uh, people disappear, people reappear, there's possibly things being implanted in people's brains or something. Uh, it, it's good, although I don't like how the last book ended. Because the last book ended in such a way that I'm like, that it just makes you go, oh, you're just throwing in everything but the kitchen sink now. Also, I don't like, at first it seemed like it was a, just kind of an ensemble cast of characters. Uh, just different people from the town, the, the teacher's son, his best friend, the, just various people in the town. But it kind of seems to start coming to focus upon um, an actor who's back to visit his family and happens to be there at this time, and the sister of his ex-girlfriend, and his ex-girlfriend had a kid that he never knew about and the sister's taking care of her. And the sister is a, a junkie, a recovering junkie. But so it starts focusing a lot on those two characters and I, they're the two least interesting characters as far as I'm concerned in the whole thing. 
So that kind of turned me off. But again, a provisional thumbs up. I, I a lot of times you can find it on sale for 99 cents. I would say go for it. Go get, ahead and get the whole season one, not just episode one. That way you'll get like a whole feel for it. And I, I think that they do periodically do, because I think they're up to season four of this one. And they'll periodically do sales. So I will I will look for the sale of season two, because I really didn't like how the, the last book ended. Well, these are ebooks, so I won't read them. Yeah, they're ebooks. I'm not an ebook reader. He's not an ebook reader. I want to turn a page. You can you can do that kind of. You just go click on the screen, and it's like turning a page. No, it's not. You go click. You even get to see the page like start curving at the top, like it's a page. You can do a little fold-over bookmark. No, oh, that's worse. I don't like those click. fold-over things. <laughs> Oh, it's like click. if you ever well, see, you if click you ever borrow a book that I that is mine that I read, I don't even break the spine when I read them. When I read books, so I don't even see. bring back bring that book back to me that the spine is broken and you've done that dog ear thing. But the nice thing with an e book is if someone dog ears it, you can just go click, and then the dog ear completely disappears. Nope, no e book for <laughs> and there's no spine to break. So. Finally, I did want to touch on one more thing with um, DC and Marvel, because they're starting a little trend. Before I was talking about DC and how they did their relaunch, and they now have their new thing that's coming up, um, not Forever Evil, like End of Tomorrow or something like that. that that's the one that looks like it's going to be a train wreck. But Marvel has started this thing where they have something called Marvel Now. And twice a year, they launch new titles in the Marvel Now series. Or Marvel Now push. And it's it's supposed to be considered kind of a jump-on point. And so, you you know, they launch uh, Ms. Marvel and the new Captain Marvel, and they just relaunched Fantastic Four in the Marvel Now. Well, the trick is that when you... There, there's a marketing ploy being done here. When you relaunch something, people jump on to the new issue number one. And you get a boost in sales over the last issue that had been published. So you can actually, which Marvel has done with Wolverine, X-Men, Spider-Man, various, uh, Fantastic Four, you can cancel a comic book and start it with a new issue number one the very next month, saying, oh, it's a new jumping on point, and your sales will peak. But they've discovered, and DC's doing that right now with Teen Titans. DC had been kind of making fun of Marvel for it or whatever, but they're, they just canceled Teen Titans and starting the new issue number one of Teen Titans the very next month. And while, yes, you do get that peak, after a couple months, sales lag and they lag, they're, they look like they're starting to get to where they lag to lower than what they were when you canceled the old title. So they're not, while you get this big peak in sales, you're not keeping the sales going. And the interesting thing that I'm finding about this is if any of you guys have been reading comic books for any length of time, you remember Marvel in the 90s when the corporation really took over the, how Marvel was being run, and we were getting new issue ones all the time. Uh, Silver Sable got her own series, and then we had Fantastic Force, and we, uh, Workforce from the Avengers, and all these things. And there were series that would be launched, and everybody knew after reading the first issue, well, this isn't going to last, and it would only, they would only last about 12 issues. But the corporation didn't care because all they cared about was that they got new sales for the number one. And that's why they kept on launching new number ones, because they knew that that would boost sales. And at that time, the corporation actually was looking at other things as being what really made money. They didn't care about the comic books, they cared about the marketing, the merchandising, like t-shirts and lunch boxes and stuff like that. I just find it interesting, and 
Marvel actually started losing ground rapidly because they started becoming well known for putting out crap. And I'm just really curious why no one has learned the lesson from that and they're repeating that same structure when it's showing in their sales that, oh, our sales actually go down after we do this after a little while. All we're doing is selling number ones. We're not selling number threes and fours and fives. So I'm hoping that they quickly learn their lesson and they stop doing this or that maybe instead of just launching new series all the time, they'll come up with, hey, this is a new story. We will launch, just stop, like Marvel, just stop publishing the comic books that, you're, that you keep on doing that with and have like a Spider-Man title, an Avengers title, a Fantastic Four title, and everything else that you want to relaunch with number ones. Just tell your six issue story so you can make your trade paperback, and that's what it is. It's a six issue Fantastic Four limited series. It's a six issue X-Men limited series. Instead of making it sound like you actually have faith that this is going to be a series that's going to last any time. I, I think that that would actually be more successful and wouldn't make the readers feel like they're being manipulated. Because eventually that's what happens, is the readers start realizing how much of manipulation is going on. So that, that kind of finishes that up. I do have one more thing that will hopefully at least amuse you enough that you'll stop looking so bored. Well, I'm looking at the time. Oh, okay. Well, yes. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the time because you got to go to work in a little bit. Yes. Yes, I do. But did you know that there is a new musical opening off-Broadway? Uh, I know a few of them. Did you know that there is one that is like a dystopian future sci-fi-ish musical? Not offhand, no. Have you ever heard of the author Ayn Rand? Yes. And you, how she's a super conservative, super capitalist, that's her philosophy. Uh, it's uh, not humanism, it's, uh, oh, it's something along those lines. I can't remember what the name of her um, philosophy is. So she's got a show opening up? Well, she's dead. But they have turned one of her, her books, Anthem, into a musical off-Broadway. Anthem actually is about individuality. It's not really about conservatism. It doesn't touch on her other topics. In some ways, she's kind of a liberal conservative, or libertarian conservative. Um, so, well, I, I've always thought that teabaggers would really love her, her philosophy, but she was more libertarian than teabagger conservatism. And she actually thought it out enough to have a philosophy about it, whether or not it actually was a nice one or not, is another story. She put thought into it. I just find it fascinating that out of all the things that you could have a musical about, they're making one based on an Anne Rand novel. Anne Rand novel. And it is uh, one of the performers, Randy Jones. Does that name sound familiar to you? Yeah. Do you know who that is? Yes. Who is it? He's from the Village People. Yes! The cowboy from the Village People. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. There's something for you guys to look at on, on Broadway. Off-Broadway. Off-Broadway. Well, it still has the word Broadway in it. Yeah, but it's difference. There is difference. I, I'm, I'm actually more curious about this than I am about anything else I've heard on Broadway recently. Even though I do think that this just sings train wreck. I'm it's curious supposed to be about, a rock opera. I, I'm more curious about Heather's the musical. I'm dying to know about Heather. I forgot about Heather's. I do want to see Heather's musical. I got to see uh, a rehearsal of one of the numbers. It was great. The soundtrack comes out next month. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay, see, that's something that we may have to try to figure out a way to get because I loved the rehearsal I saw. And there could be some Jaji numbers in that. Probably. Yeah, I don't think there'll be a single Jaji number in Anthem. I don't remember any women in, in the show Anthem. In or the in the book. book. Yeah, the book is really short. It, it's like... The short story. Yeah. Or a novella. Yeah, novelette. <laughs> it, it, 
I think it barely breaks 100 pages. But that's a short story. You'd think, but it's it's published as a book, all but on all time. But you could probably read it during the lunchtime. So you got anything else? No, that's all I got. Okay, so I would like to thank you all for sticking around with us for another week's episode. We had episode no fifty-eight. Oh, we had comments. I don't have them with me. And I had it with me yesterday. I had it with me yesterday. Um, oh, um, Stewie I, Monster, I, thank you. I know you. Stewie said Monster, something. thank you. Yes, uh, we did get a comment on the Facebook page on one of the posts I put up regarding the commercial for uh, X Men. X Men: Days of Future Past. They're tying and it with King. Uh, no uh, Hardys. Carl Hardy's, Jr. Carl's Jr. Hardys. Yeah. Carl's Jr. Yeah. There is no Hardys on this side of the country. Yeah. Other, yeah. But the Mystique one, I've been mumbling for a while that I thought it was kind of a sexist commercial. And while I wasn't offended by it, I am just amazed that they would put that on the air. That they would sign off on it. Yeah, because there's no way in hell I would have ever done that. And, and this is coming from a person who describes to his coworker about snowballing. I didn't describe anything. I told her to look it up. Exactly. At work. I told her to use her own phone, not to, to not to use the computer to Google that. And then post about it on Facebook and have other people look it up. I didn't tell anyone Sweet to look it up. Sweet and innocent authors that we know. I told no one to look it up, other than Tammy. So, hey. <laughs> Anything that people do, uh, that I, th th hey, I did nothing. But um, someone else commented about how the disappointed they were in it, and I really wish I remembered the name of the person. Um, so we'll get that to you next. We'll week. We'll get that to you next week. I, I'm sorry I didn't catch your name. I don't remember it right now. Like I said, I was prepared last night for comments. I don't have it today. So. Anything else? Thank you very you much. Do you comments? I don't pay attention to that. Oh, you don't pay attention to no. comments? Okay. So, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Don't don't forget to leave comments. We love comments. Catch us on Twitter, Facebook, iTunes, Libsyn, YouTube. We're there. Okay. Yes. I will not be History. I will not be, will not be silent, silent anymore. I will see a movement in history. So that last little bit there was I Will Not Be Silent Anymore from the new musical off-Broadway, Anthem, yep, based on an Ayn Rand novel, short novel, but yeah, Ayn Rand, Broadway musical, well, off-Broadway, but still, Broadway's in there somewhere, never would have pictured an Ayn Rand musical. Um, two things strike me with this, and that is, one, given her, like, just s strong thoughts on capitalism, I'm really surprised I was able to find a free sample of her, uh, from the musical. It seems to kind of go against her, her whole thought process there. And, well, semi-free, it was online, and 
you know, hey, they put it there for people to watch and I'm advertising for them. Please don't sue me. Please don't get the ghost of Ayn Rand after me. Also, the video features um, many images. If you're able to watch the video of it, you know, those of you who are listening don't get to see this, but the video features many people in different levels of protesting, tearing down the Berlin Wall, things like that. But it also features like Kent State, the hippies at Kent State and stuff like this. And given her ardent conservatism, I'm just kind of curious what she would have thought about using those images there, too. <laughs> I don't know. So, then again, it's not like she was necessarily against human rights. So, and which Anthem is all about being individual. That's, that's really a big, strong thing. So, it kind of is a human rights novel. It's really, really short. If you're ever in the mood to say, hey, at least I read something by Ayn Rand, read Anthem. You'll be able to finish it in like, you know, a day and, and you'll be done and and you won't have to like slug through Atlas Shrugged or the fountain Fountainhead instead. <sighs> anyway, I would like to thank Compete Magazine for being our sponsor. Make sure to go check them out on the website also and I'll put a link to the website down with this episode. And this month, still the swimsuit issue, you get to check out people in swimsuits, and Joseph has an article on the online copy of the magazine, so check that out. Also, don't forget to check out um, Joshua Tree Feeding Program. They are a nonprofit organization that helps people with HIV and AIDS get food. Sister Program helps people with pets get food for their pets, so you don't have to choose between feeding yourself and feeding your pet. Check them out at www jtfp.org so that's pretty much my spiel thank you all for catching us this week sticking by us being our loyal loyal growing army and we look forward to your comments catch us on twitter catch us on facebook i'm, I'm getting better at the facebook I'm, I'm getting better at the twitter but really wow <sighs> tweeting so many times oh and I, I actually got tweeted by, or retweeted by William Shatner and Carrie Fisher. Hmm. Go hunt that down. So anyway, catch us, catch us, catch us. If you go on to iTunes, leave us a review. It, I cannot emphasize how much it helps the podcast. So until next week. Oh, one last thing. Wow, we talk a lot about TV. I'm actually thinking that maybe we need to do two episodes a week. One episode that is nothing but TV, and then the other episode is everything else. So we'd like maybe post it Thursday and Sunday or something like that. Give us your ideas of what you think about this, because that would make each one of the episodes shorter without us having to cut content, and it would make it easier for us to like actually have a focus. Hmm, a focus. Both us? Sorry, that's a horrible, horrible punchline to a horrible, horrible joke. Oi. Anyway, have a good week, and we look forward to seeing you or hearing you or catching you again next week. Bye.